I'm Jenny Fish with OneBigHappy.com, and welcome to my Christmas stocking knit-along. Every year since I was little, my mom and I would pick one project, whether it be stringing popcorn, whether it be salt dough ornaments. Every year I always make one thing homemade special to add to my Christmas decorations collection. And this year, it's gonna be my Christmas stocking that I knitted. In this episode, we're gonna focus on the cuff. I'm gonna show you a provisional cast on, how to work fair aisle, and then we're gonna close up this cuff sleeve with a very simple stitch. So we have the kit for this project on our website at onebighappy.com, and in the kit includes the pattern plus all the yarn you'll need. Let's get started on a provisional cast on so we can make this cuff. First, I wanna go over the pattern and supplies that you will need to make these stockings. We use the Cascade 220 Superwash in the Sport. Um, that line has several different colors and we have a few kits ready for you on our website. Um, I'm also using a US size seven knitting needle with a 40 inch cord because I'll be working in Magic Loop and double pointed needles do come in handy for this project. You can work Magic Loop or you can use double pointed needles, whichever you prefer. But for this knit along, I'm gonna be using Magic Loop. One of the additional supplies that you're gonna need for this project is a crochet hook, and I used a size G. Something else about this pattern that I really wanna go into detail about. We're gonna be doing a color work technique called fair aisle, and that is where you're knitting with two colors, you're carrying the yarn through uh, the entire round as you go along. Okay, to start the provisional cast on, you're gonna need some scrap yarn and a crochet hook. So I have my crochet hook here, and I literally have a bunch of scrap yarn right here. So I'm just gonna use the end. What I need to do is chain um, a little over 60 chains for my cast on. So to start that, we're doing a slip knot. Stick our crochet hook through the slip knot. Tighten it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab the yarn with my hook, bring it through. So it's like a daisy chain through and through like that. I'm gonna do that until I have about 66, 68. I just definitely wanna have over 60 of these loops on here. Now, when I get to the end, here I have one that I've already finished right here. So on this one, I've chained about 66. When I got to the end, I put another um, slip knot in the end so that I know this is the end and this is the beginning. This comes in handy later, so I'll show you that part of it. Now, I wanna take a good look at this chain. Okay, so here, this is the right side of the work of the chain. You see these V's here, or little hearts, and on the back side, you'll see these bumps. These are like pearl bumps. Let me show you what those look like. See how my needle can slide right underneath there? So I'm gonna go in a few of these bumps and actually start casting on. I'm gonna slide my needle underneath here. So now I'm gonna start using my real yarn for this project, which is the red. Um, it's called Ruby, that's the colorway for this one. And I just made a loop, no slip knot, just a loop. And I'm gonna put that around my needle, just like this, and pull it through. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. And now I'm gonna knit into that bump. So I'm putting my tails aside and knit into that bump right there. Now sometimes you're gonna get a little strand like that of your scrap yarn. If you see that, try to avoid that. It helps later on in the process to not have those. That's called a split yarn when that happens, when you get one little strand out of place. So I've gone back through, wrapped my yarn around, and pulled it through. There we go. I'm gonna do this 60 times all the way through this chain. Now this is scrap yarn, so if you do happen to catch one of those, it's okay, you can clip it out later, but it just makes it easier later on in the process when we pull this out. Okay, so go ahead and continue on until you have 60 stitches cast on to your knitting needle. So for the beginning setup for Magic Round, I'm on the second side of my work, so I've knit 30 stitches, now I'm ready to knit the second 30 stitches. 
I've got my provisional cast on right here. I want to make sure it's all facing down. Make sure there's no twists. See how that's continuous around that side there. I've got all my stitches pushed to the tip of my needles. Now I'm ready to pull the back needle out so that I can start knitting on this needle. I've got my active yarn here and I wanna also make sure that it's up and that I'm not like scooping it under my needle because that'll inadvertently cause a yarn over which adds an extra stitch. So we wanna make sure that this is up and out of the way. So I've got this here, it's not tangled in my cord and now I'm ready to knit the second set of stitches. So this is would be um, stitch 31, 32. Now you're gonna continue going around and around until you have 25 rounds. And then I'll show you how to do the next part of the pattern. Okay, so on this sample, I have already knit 25 rounds and I'm ready to do round 26, which has an increase in it. We're at the beginning of the round, round 26, to make sure my yarn is up and over so it doesn't get tangled in my cord. And I'm going to knit four stitches. So that's one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna do a one stitch increase called a KFB, which is knit front back. I'll show you how to do that. Knit front, and then bring my needle around, and I'm gonna capture the back leg of this stitch and knit through that. So now I have increased by one stitch by knitting twice into the same stitch. I'll show you that again. Let me knit one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna do a KFB, knit through the front, swing my needle around, go through the back leg of this stitch right here, and knit through there. Okay, well, let's do that a couple more times here. One, two, three, four, and knit into the front, bring it around, knit into that back leg right there, and there. Then one, two, three, four, knit into the front, bring it around, knit it into the back. Let me get a needle and I'm gonna point this out. Right here at the base of the stitch, this one looks normal down here at the bottom. And then this one has a little bump here. And that's normal, that's what it's supposed to look like. Now you know that you've made that one stitch increase. So we're gonna continue on around this round, knitting four and in, then working that KFB increase, which stands for knit front back. If you do lose your spot, you can always come and look, see where that bump is. And I so now I know I've knit two stitches past that bump. Um, so I got three, Four, that's just a little tip to help keep you on track. Knit through the front, come through the back. There we go. And one, two, three, four. Knit through the front, around, and knit through the back. Okay, I'll flip this over. Now when you're pulling, like, you see how I turned that? I'm pulling on this one that's closest to me. Just be careful to look on this side of your work when you're pulling your cord on this side to make sure that you're not pulling the wrong one because then you could pull everything. I say that a few times here because I've done it. <laughs> it happens all the time where you're not paying attention and you grab the wrong side of the cord and all of your stitches are now off of your needles. So just you know, be cautious of that when you turn your work. And again, we're gonna go and finish this whole side of knitting four and working the increase. Knit through the front, knit through the back. Okay, now we're gonna turn it this way. I've got my stitch marker here. So I'm at the beginning of the round. So this next round I put in the pattern, it's called a purl round. Um, we're just going to purl all the stitches around the entire um, work here and the reason for that and I want to show you on the finished stocking here see this edge right here How it's nice and crisp. That's what we're creating now by doing just one simple round of purl bumps So I'll show you how to do that. 
I've got my yarn up front here. I've moved my stitch marker to the back needle, pushing this in here, pull this around. Now, this is tricky because you don't want to get your yarn wrapped around your cord. That'll create an extra stitch. I'm going to bring this forward and then bring my needle back. So I'm going to show you what this looks like here. I've got my needle back here and my yarn forward. It's not wrapped around my cord. Okay, now I'm going to slide pearlwise in and now grab my working yarn and bring it up and over. There we go. So we're going to purl all the way around this round. Just one round of pearls. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished one round of pearl bumps right here. So that's purling every stitch all the way around. Now we're ready to start the chart. And the chart's going to show us the color work that we're going to be doing, the Fair Isle pattern. So I went ahead and printed my pattern. Um, you can use Knit Companion to follow the chart. Um, you can use a pattern keeper with the magnetic bar, whatever works for you. Um, some people just even mark off each row as they go along. But I want to show you a little bit more what this looks like. I've got posting notes here, and I'm going to slide them right underneath this first round. I keep saying row. I'm sorry about that. I'm looking at a chart that's flat, but I'm knitting in the round. So you repeat this chart twice in one round. And in the pattern, we have this all printed out for you. You'll have 36 stitches on each needle, um, so a total of 72 all the way around. So I'm going to slide this underneath here, underneath round one. Okay, so I've got my post it notes on my chart, and I'm going to start on round one. Now, one of the things I want to point out when you're reading a chart is you don't read it like you read words. You read it from the way that you're knitting. So you're going to start here and work from right to left. And then when you repeat, because this, this chart will be repeated twice, you'll start again from right to left. That's how you kind of read the chart. And then, since this is just two colors, the darker one is going to be the red that I'm working with and the lighter one is going to be the white. And when you're making your stocking, you can choose which you want to be the dominant color versus which, you know, which one you want to be bright, dark, light, whatever you want in your pat in, in your kit that you choose. But for me, the dark is going to be red on this piece that I'm working here. So I'm going to set this just right up here. The first round is just all one color. So I'm going to knit one round and then I'm going to come back and show you how to work between the two colors. Okay, so I have my post-it notes here ready for round two. I'm going again still be working from right to left and my first block is a white block. So I'm going to be using white insert my needle in here, brand new yarn. I'm going to make a loop, slide that on my needle, and knit. Now here's where you want to decide which color you want to be dominant. Because I have a red background, I really want the white to pop, so I'm going to choose that to be my dominant color, and I'm going to be carrying it in my left hand, and I'll show you what that looks like. I've got that first one knit. I'm going to bring the white color over here and hold it continental style and hold my red yarn over here English style, how I normally knit. So I'll show you how this works. Got here and here. Knit one here. Knit one here. And then two. And I'm just going back and forth between the two. Now, I am not um, as experienced knitting, um, holding the yarn with my left hand as I am with my right hand. So when I wrap the yarn around, I tend to use my index finger of my right hand to hold the yarn there as I pull it through that stitch. Um, I hope that helps. Now, if that's not comfortable for you, some other options are you can keep both of your yarns in um, to the side and then just pick up and knit
whichever one needs to be uh, the next color. Okay, so you always wanna keep the same color in front. So for me, I'm keeping the red in front and knitting that. And then the white is coming from underneath here. So I'm just, I've kind of gone off chart just to show you that how I'm transferring between these colors. And this would be if I didn't want to hold them one in each hand. Let me do a few more here. And again, you all follow your chart. Um, and this is for the snowflake pattern is the one I'm showing you here. Um, we also have a chart for the Christmas presents as well. One of the things I do want to show you on the, or talk to you about, I'll show you. I have the chart right here. On the Christmas presents chart, it's upside down. And there's a reason for that. It's upside down because when you're finished, we're going to fold this cuff, cuff over and then it'll be right side up. So don't think that you have to start up here and go down. You still start on round number one. Okay. So let's continue on. The other thing that I want to show you, or just some helpful tips when you're working this process. Make sure that you keep your stitches spread out along your needle. When your floats are going through, don't tug real tight. You want to keep those floats loose and keep your stitches loose. And then I'm just going to work up here real quick to um, the end of this needle because also when you're working this magic loop style, you want to make sure that when you're crossing over from this side to, to the other side like this, that you kind of hold your work a little bit like this. And hold your work like this for the first couple of stitches. Let me set up for that and show you. And the reason for this is because you're floating those other yarns behind your work. If your tension is too tight, if those floats are too short, it's going to cinch everything up. So you just want to be relaxed when you work these stitches um, and not focus on keeping them really tight. Okay, now I'm getting ready to go from my back needle to my front needle. So I flipped it over. I'm beginning chart... Um, round two on the chart again. I've worked through the first 36, now I'm working through the second 36, which is a repeat of the first 36. Once you have the pattern in front of you, that'll all make a lot more sense. But the technique that I wanna show you is when you start this first stitch after this gap here, just kinda hold your work a little like this. And like, I'm gonna knit this one. And then my next stitch, oops, that just fell off. Let me fix that real quick. My next stitch is the other color. I want my float to be loose enough to go through all that area without cinching it up. See, if I knit like normal, see how that cinched that up when I did that? I don't want to do that. I want to keep this super loose for this first one. And knit through it. Oh, I got that right through there. Okay. Keep it super loose. So I've just, and you only need to do this for the first couple of stitches um, after that change right there. Then you can go back to normal holding your yarn or holding your project the way you normally do. Um, and again, this one's going in front, this one's going behind and front. So you'll work through that chart. And then once you finish that chart, meet me back here and I'll show you the next step for finishing off the cuff. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've knit all the way up, finished off my chart, put that aside. Now I'm ready to go back to my pattern. And on this round, we are going to decrease um, every four stitches, uh, the opposite of what we did when we increased. For this decrease, we're gonna use a knit two together. So let me show you how that's worked. We're gonna knit four stitches. One, two, three, four, and then a knit two together. You basically, you just slide your needle into two stitches and knit those two together. So I'll show you that one more time. One, two, three, four, 
knit two together. I'm going to do this all the way around and then I'll show you how we join this all up and close up the cuff. Here's where we're at right now. We have the provisional cast on where we started. We have our stockinette rounds. We did a round of increases. We did our pearl bumps. We worked our chart and then we did a round of decreases. Now it's time to close all this up and make it look nice and pretty. So I'm going to show you on the finished one over here that this right here is where we are now. Now I'm going to flip this inside out. This is where we started. So this is where the provisional cast on was. There's the stockinette and then the chart pattern and here. So to make this piece here look like the finished, let me show you how that's done at this point. And this is where some double pointed needles are going to come in handy. Okay, we're going to fold this inside of here. Hey, the magic. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like our finished project. I'm going to pull this provisional cast on here. And rotate around. And come back here. Let's get everything where it needs to be. Okay, so here is the chain that we started with. This is where the we started casting on. Here is our knot to tell us this is the side we ended with. So I'm going to pull that out. Now I can pull this out here. And in theory, everything's going to come just right out. Let's see. There we go. Okay. I'm going to pull, pull. See how that's just coming undone right there? Okay, we're going to very slowly undo these. And now keep in mind, this is an animal fiber and it has little fuzzy things on it. So they, they do sometimes kind of felt together a little bit or snag up. That's okay. Just take your time. And I can see this one right here. I'm going to take my double pointed needle and I'll, let's see here. Kind of just gonna tug. There you go. Then it starts coming undone again. And that's normal. That happens. Um, but if you get too frustrated, you can always use your scissors and clip it because that's your scrap yarn. You don't need to keep it. Okay. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm getting a little excited. Now, on this last stitch, my yarn is actually through the loop, so I need to take that out. But that's just, you just have to do that the one time. And here, be dainty. Take breaths, go slow. I'm going to slide it through the first leg of that stitch. Pull. And this is the time where you really don't want to rush yourself. You really do want to take your time and pull each stitch out individually. Now you can pick this up as I am with a double pointed needle or you can grab a second pair of circular needles and pick those up. But you do need to get these stitches on another needle because we will be working them in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around, putting all of these stitches back onto my needle. And then I'll show you how we just close this up. So while I was working on this round, I came across something that I wanted to show you guys because this does happen and I want to let you know that it's okay when you see it and how to fix it. So here, when I had knit into this stitch, I had captured some of my scrap yarn in there. So the way to fix this, keep in mind this is scrap yarn, so don't, you know, don't worry about it. So I'm just going to very gently come in here and just snip that little thread that got caught in, in between there. And now I can keep going along. But don't hesitate, if you see that happen, you can just snip those if they get, you know, caught in there. But I wanted to show you that real quick. Okay, let me go ahead and finish this off and then I'll show you the rest. I've got all of the stitches picked up and on my double pointed needles. I've got my all my scrap yarn here, we're done with that. Now I'm turning this over and I want to line up the first stitch here with the first stitch there. So this is um, the very first one that we cast on 
And this is the first one in this round. So that gives you kind of an idea of where we're at there. Okay. So I'm going to put these two needles together. This is a little fussy, but it's, it's definitely worth it. It's going to look gorgeous. All right. Here we go. Now I'm going to be knitting with this one from the cord here, this back one. And then this double pointed needle is just going to hang out there for a minute. Okay, bring this around. Now I'm going to knit the first stitch from the front and the first stitch from the back. And I'm going to wrap my yarn around and pull it through both those two loops and slide them off the needle. So let me show you that again. Knit through there and pull both of those stitches off the needles. So through there and through there, around. And so I'll continue doing this all the way around. Go ahead and finish all the way around, joining the uh, beginning stitches to the current stitches, and then you're ready to start the leg portion of the stocking. So I know there was a lot of information in this first episode. There was a lot of things we went over. Um, fair isle knitting, provisional cast on, combining two together. If you have any additional questions or if you aren't quite sure about something that I showed you, we have a Facebook group called One Big Happy Yarn Company Makers. Go ahead and jump on there. Post pictures of your project. Ask your questions. Let us know. We love helping you out. And plus, there's a lot of community members on there, too, that like to join in on the conversation. You can see what other people are knitting on. They can share their pictures. It's We just have a lot of fun on there. And it's a place to get some additional support and answer questions and share and have friends. Thank you for joining in and watching these first few steps on how to make this adorable Christmas stocking. Join me next week, and you'll get to see it all come together. Happy knitting! <laughs>